Hi, it's Pavel with a homework uh, for C Sharp programming. Uh, we'll be creating uh, some object oriented, uh, or we'll be doing some object oriented programming, creating some classes using some inheritance. So, the assignment is from a book. It's called Visual C Sharp An Introduction to Object Oriented Programming by Joyce Farrell. And uh, we'll be creating a class called Name Game which will have some auto-implemented properties for the name and the maximum number of players. And uh, we will include two string uh, game method that will override the object to string method and returns a string that contains the name of the class using get type and the name of the game and the number of players. Now get type will return the name of the class, including the uh, namespace. You, you'll see how the output will be coming up. If, you, if you're not familiar with get, get type, uh, you will quickly understand it when, when you see it in action. All right, so let's create a class called game. All right, so we'll add a new class and call it game. So, and in our game, we need uh, auto-implemented properties for game's name and maximum number of number of players. So let's do the properties first. So it's going to be public uh, string game name. Actually, it's auto-implemented, so let's just do it all in one line. Get and set. And public... Number of players will going to be integer max num of players and again get and set just auto implemented properties. Now our constructor, of course, so we'll need to take the game name and max number of players from the user, so uh, it will accept string game name and integer max num except it's lowercase max num players and these will be uh, assigned to our properties so there will be no uh, input checking whatsoever this, this exercise does not call for any input checks or any validation at all so our game name property will equal user supplied game name and our max number of players property will equal user supplied value for max number of players okay so that will take care of that and uh, we also need a two string method for our game so uh, public override string to string and uh, so it's supposed to use the get type to return uh, everything uh, all the information all the system information about the uh, game class as well as uh, the game's name and the number of players so we will return I like to do a formatted uh, output, so uh, because I can use the placeholders. So uh, class info, and here will be placeholder one. On a new line, we will enter. We will output the game name, so it's gonna be game name placeholder number two and on the last line we will output max maximum number of players and that will be three placeholder number three so uh, now this will be of course our properties so game name is our property game name 
maximum oh I'm sorry I forgot to get type so a first placeholder is the class info which is simply get type all right uh, our game's name is the next one so game name property and lastly our max number of players property all right that should uh, that should output that okay so we have uh, our game class and now we're supposed to do the second part of the exercise which is to create a child class named game with time limit that includes an auto implemented integer property for the game's time limit in minutes and of course we need to write a program that instantiates an object for each class and demonstrates all the methods now so this one game with time limit will will be will inherit from our class uh, game since it's supposed to be a child of uh, of the game. So let's create another class. Call it game with time limit, and it inherits from our game class. All right, so. Uh, and in its auto implemented property to hold the game's time limit in minutes. So uh, public integer time limit get and set it's auto implemented. Now uh, the user will have to supply the uh, the time limit. So we need the our public constructor public game with time limit now remember this one inherits from game so we need to supply also our game name and max number of players uh, which is string name integer num players and finally we need the time limits which is going to be an integer time limit of course the first two name and num player number of players is part of the game again we are inheriting from game so we need to get those or instantiate those with uh, in our base class so we need to pass those to the base class constructor name and number of players all right so this is going to be our constructor the user will supply a name and number of players just like it, it, they do for uh, for the game class except in this case these two variables will be processed or instantiated directly in uh, our base class our time limit on the other hand will be uh, will be used only in our game with time limit class so and it will equal our time limit property or our time limit property will equal the time limit supplied by the by the user so if you're not familiar with uh, how in, uh, inheritance works then uh, you know this may be very confusing but basically again these two variables are the same for the game and for game with time limit and since game with time limit inherits from game these two have to go to our base class and be uh, assigned the values there we already have all the public properties that handle those two variables or the, the two arguments and time limit is uh, only uh, part of the game with time limit class so we deal with it in this class directly uh, using the time limit property. Okay, so what else is there to do? Uh, that's really all for this class. Um, well, let's do a two string class as well, just so we can see uh, the difference. Public uh, override, um, override string to string. And in this case, we actually go. <laughs> All right, let me uh, 
this is might be a little confusing again what I'm gonna do now so I'm formatting the output just like I did before and uh, I will pass base to string in other words it will output to class info using get type it will output the game name and number of players the only thing that is different for this class is the time limit which has to be output separately so uh, if I format it uh, there will be placeholder zero for a base to string class base to string method and uh, on new line I will output a time limit and there will be a placeholder for that all right so our first placeholder zero will be the base to string class so it will output all of these and we will add the time limit property and uh, something's not working let me see what, what does it want oh I put a semicolon there instead of a comma and semicolon at the end of course okay so when we instantiate time, uh, the game with time limit class or object and call the to string method of that it will output the class name which is game with time limit it will output the game name we supply and max number of players and it will all be processed in our base class and then to it we will add our time limit which is going to be processed using our uh, public property all right so let's create a few objects uh, variable game actually game equals new game and we we will supply uh, the game's name uh, okay so it's gonna be uh, my minecraft maximum number of players I don't know 16 I guess and uh, for the other one for our game with time limit equals new game with time limit and again we have to supply the, the name of the game which is going to be I don't know uh, team for dress 2 number of players I don't know 32 maximum L oh, and over here it's asked for also the time limit it has uh, remember it has uh, three arguments in our uh, constructor so we need to supply three of them and so the, the time limit is like never ending so I will just say uh, 1000 you can play that for days and never get tired of that awesome game all right so uh, console dot write line first let's write the game object and then console console dot uh, Okay, console that right line the game with time limit object. I also use the console read line so we can pause the screen and see the output. All right, so if I run it, uh, I should get uh, the the name. Oh. Well, I get an exception. Uh, index zero base must be greater than equal. Okay, so uh, that's because instead of one, I put two. It's a zero based. And over here, it's supposed to be two. Zero, one, two. 
So anyway, when I put it, I should get for the game class. I should get a intro to OOP uh, game class uh, game, and then uh, Minecraft and 16. Oh no, we're here for for the game with time limit. I should get a, again intro to OOP class uh, namespace, and then the name of the uh, of the class, and then we get the again the game which is Team Fortress 2, then number of players 32, and in this case also the time limit. So let's see if that's gonna work. And so we got uh, the game, game class, and the namespace. Then the game name is uh, Minecraft Player 16, just like we entered over here. And the second one is uh, game class. Uh, Game with the time limit, Team Fortress 2, players 32, and time limit 1000. So it's working. Alright, so uh, to recap, this is our uh, base class uh, called Game. It accepts game name and uh, maximum number of players. We will simply assign them to our public properties and output a formatted string with the information about the, about the class and the game name and number of players. Then we create another class uh, which inherits from game because uh, we will use game to process our game name and maximum number of players. But in addition to that, uh, we will also uh, user will supply time limit, which is assigned to our public property called time limit. And we will output the string, formatted string, that will output a uh, all the information from uh, or the formatted information from the uh, base class. It will simply take this two string method and add it to this one. That's what it's base to string means. And in addition to that, we will output the time limit. Over here, we created two objects one for game, one for game with time limit. We passed uh, some values to each of the constructors. And I'll put the, the two string methods for uh, both of those classes. Alright, so there you have it. Hope it helps you. And I'll see you next time. Take care.